and welcome back to the lecture series on World War II. In the last couple of videos, we were focusing on the origins of World War II. And they included the Great Depression, um, a combination of fasci fascism, communism, and appeasement, the Sino-Japanese War, and the Spanish Civil War. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a nice little handy-dandy timeline of the war itself, starting in 1939 and all the way to 1945. And now what I want to do is just quickly address the, the some of the aspects of the origins and how they kind of go along with, I'll zoom out for you, um, they go along with the Great War. So a lot of the things that are happening here, that are happening here, and even happening here over in the home front section, there, some of them are hap happening at the same time. So, so this part of his, you I mean, know, history is very difficult. We want to try to make it chronological. Chronological, chrono chronology is a very important aspect in history. But there's always lots of things impacting lots of other things that are that are happening at different times. And so, you know, basically, what we're doing here is just kind of prevent presenting. Um, basic overviews of certain subjects so you'll probably see some overlap in the war and the origins and the home front but don't be worried don't be discouraged um there's it's supposed to be like that just try to understand the basic um the basic models of what we're trying to present here and i think you'll be okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to 1939 to an event that really shocked the entire world and that was the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, or the Nazi Soviet Non Aggression Pact. Um, it was signed between uh, these two guys right here. They're on the other side of, of, of Stalin here. Over here, this guy here, this is the, uh, the German foreign minister, Joachim von Ribbentrop. And over here is the Soviet foreign minister. Uh, Valachislav Molotov, and he's, you see, he's standing next to Joseph Stalin. And this was a, this was a huge, um, just stun to the world. No one even thought that this was possible because you have to remember that that the, the Nazis and the Soviets really hated each other. The fascists and the communists were not friends. I think we talked about that a lot in previous episodes. And if we didn't, I'm, I'm going to make a point of talking about it right now. They they really didn't like each other. There was lots of there was lots of issues between fascism and communism they really are a far right and a far left sort of uh two leaning groups and when they come together they they uh they like to fight a lot for uh control so it really did stun the world and it coordinated spheres of influence and what we're going to do is kind of just go over some of those spheres of influence so the pact was signed on august 24th 1939 and What's going to happen is in on September 1st of 1939, uh, Germany is going to invade Poland with the Blitzkrieg. And over here, this is a German uh, Panzerkopfwagen tank or a German Panzer tank. And these were these were used extensively during the entire war. But the idea of Blitzkrieg or lightning warfare was kind of the main aspect of the Polish invasion. It only lasted about a month. Uh, this video here, you can. I want you to, when you're done watching this video, go back to the Prezi and and click on this video, or you see it in YouTube. Um, it's a really interesting um, little 10-minute clip of some of the the footage from the war. And there's going to be a whole lot of these in this whole war section. So you'll notice that all the way through here, there's little videos. Uh, what I found out earlier is that, of course, you don't get any sound in the videos. So I. I I hesitate playing them during the presentation. We'll just keep it towards the lecture and and feel free and or to stop the video and watch these and watch these things. They're really fantastic, um, great, great footage. But it, uh, the invasion of Germany didn't just stop with Germany invading Poland. The Soviet Union also invaded Poland. They invaded Poland on September seventeenth, nineteen thirty nine. And so you see the, these are the German states invading into Poland from the west and the Soviet Union invading from the east. So during this Soviet non-aggression pact up here, they were coordinating. They were coordinating this assault on Poland. And that's, that's, notice, and that's documented and noticeable. And here's also an interesting picture. So you have all these invading forces. So Poland's getting invaded from Czechoslovakia and Germany and and. and so the Soviet Union, and, and where do they invade? Sadly, they invade into Romania, and a lot of the forces did that. Um, 
you'll see in the video when you watch it too that the the Polish army wasn't necessarily ready for the for the Blitzkrieg forces and and, and Poland really really had a tough time and, and a lot of stereotypes <laughs> have been have been attached to Poland because of these and many other previous losses and wars. So very interesting. And then here's a here's an after picture. You could see uh, the pink outline is is where where Poland was, and then the blue and the the green is now respectively where German and Russian territory is. Uh, and this inspired the United States to and the Congress to pass. It's called the uh, Cash Carry Act. It was a revised from the Neutrality Act, which was they that. They were written back during World War One and after World War One to, um, to basically install U.S. neutrality. But the Cash Carry Acts allowed the United States to actually sell munitions and uh, guns and and weapons, even goods like food and stuff. They the buyers had to carry it out on their own ships and pay in cash. So you know, allowing them to give aid, but but not so much as to just kind of give it to them without you know, basically, a, a, which is essentially collateral, which is the cash and carrying of the own ships. The United States really, at this point of the war, kind of saw the writing on the wall, but they really wanted to avoid any any major instigation in in the, the conflict. But but that brings us to a, a new issue. So so basically, after the invasion of Poland, the world the world is is stunned by what happened. However, literally between October 1939 and May 1940, there was very little fighting that was happening in Europe. They call it the the phony war, which is a very interesting concept because you know the, you, many people think of the Nazis as they were just these brutal warlords just stomping all over Europe, and, and they did quite a bit of that. But but this this aspect of, of them actually there being eight months of, of peace essentially, I mean gave hope that maybe this was just kind of like the, the Nazis, you know, spreading out a little bit to what they needed. Um, but obviously that's not true. Uh, what I want to do quickly is go down here and talk about, it's called the Winter War. Uh, the Winter War was part of the Soviet, uh, Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact that talked about uh, the Soviet Union's war with Finland. And, um, in 1939, after the invasion of Poland, the Soviet Union also invaded Finland. They've had this huge territorial disputes. See where these red areas are. We'll, we'll zoom in. See these these red areas are. This is these are areas that um, that were contested between the Soviet Union and Finland, and and the Soviet Union wanted to take them back. But there were some issues with with German with German interests in the area as well as places like Prussia. So they had to sign this this Concord to make it all work out. And this is this is one of the uh, Soviet T-34 tanks. These are the most produced tanks, and many see them as the most effective tanks of the war, though the Germans probably had the most technologically advanced tanks. Uh, and here are some Finnish ski infantry as well. These are people from Finland who are, um, carry around assault rifles, well, uh, regular rifles, and they would try to attack uh, Nazi, or not Nazi, but Soviet, Soviet forces on the main line. So that was that was an interesting aspect of the of the war effort. So it was a war fought between so the Soviet Union and Finland. They had lots of regional disputes. And in 1940, the Moscow Peace Treaty, not treat, but treaty, is signed. And and then what happens is this Finland ends up giving some of this land as concessions. Because I mean, you can notice here the Leningrad. This is technically Saint Petersburg. This is what the Soviet Union's changed it to after the revolution. So basically, you, you can see how, how Finland and, and Russia, are, are, or the USSR, I apologize, Finland and the USSR are so close right here by one of the biggest cities. So, so basically, the Soviet Union was almost just looking for some, some extra space to, to, defend the, to defend the city of Leningrad, as well as control some of these um, other main waterways as well. So, um, so the Winter War kind of wraps up what, what was going on in that first period of war. And uh, next time what we're going to do is go over the, uh, the Battle and Invasion of France as well as the Battle of Britain. So I will see you in the next video.